once again, I want to uh, uh, say thanks to the Shrewsbury Public Library. I, I live in Shrewsbury uh, along with my wife and two children. And uh, I've, I've enjoyed seeing a lot of the different content that they have coming to the library. And this is the second time uh, I was invited back a second time here where I offered it. And I think we have about 100 people that actually signed up. I don't know if 100 will will come, but that was a pretty good turnout for a, a, a kind of a virtual talk and everything now with COVID is, is virtual. Uh, I will introduce myself. My name is uh, Donald Pelto and I am a podiatrist. That means I'm a, a foot doctor in Worcester. I have a clinic. I have uh, three other partners that are in my, my office and everyone always asks me, why in the world is a podiatrist talking about intermittent fasting? Shouldn't a endocrinologist or shouldn't a primary care or internist? And the reason I'm talking about it is because I, I don't think anyone else is. And I'm, I've been doing this for about going on three years now. If I look back at some of my YouTube videos where I started talking about this, I think it's been over two years now, and I've been personally doing it for over two, two to three years, and I've talked to it quite extensively with my patients. The main reason is because in my practice as a podiatrist, I see about 25% diabetic patients, and of those type 2 diabetics, about 100% are, are overweight and because weight increase makes someone insulin resistant, which then makes someone uh, pre-diabetic and then diabetic. And I was very frustrated because I was only able to help, for example, helping with a, a foot wound or not really neuropathy and I couldn't help with anything else. And, and this is really with intermittent fasting and, and kind of low carb type of nutrition, it, it's been able to, I've been able to help my patients more with this weight loss along with their other doctors. And then the other portion of my population are patients that get injured working out. And so they may get an Achilles tendonitis or a plantar fasciitis or some other foot problem. And when I um, aboard the subject with them, I ask them, oh, I think my internet connection might be a little unstable. If you guys can't hear me, send me a message. If you could send me a, just send me a, a message if you can't hear anything. But then those other ones that become injured and I ask them, well, do you like working out? And they say, no, I'm, and I said, well, why are you working out? And they usually say they're working out because they want to lose weight and then they get injured. And that's the other portion of the population that I treat. And so I want to first start, I'm not the one that changes your medications, takes you off your blood sugar medication, takes you off your blood pressure medication. That's not what I do. I, I give resources to my patients and I let them be advocates for themselves. And I'm happy to give you some resources here. And this is an introduction to intermittent fasting. It's by no means gonna to be totally comprehensive, but I hope to give you kind of just some information about the safety behind intermittent fasting. I hope to give you some resources that you can research on your own and maybe have a, uh, an educated conversation with your doctor if you want to do that. Okay, so uh, once again, we'll give you some resources. For those that are kind of high tech, I'm using these slides. I think you can see those that are uh, involved here and uh, we'll, we'll kind of get going here. Uh, for those that are like to use technology, in the, in the chat box, I'm gonna ask them to put the link to this, these slides if you want them. But if you're kind of high tech, you can use your phone to take a picture to download the presentation. I'm gonna show it right now in the beginning and so you could follow along with the slides if you wanted to, or you can do it at the end of the presentation. I want to start with a, a little bit of a, a patient uh, kind of experience. Uh, this is a patient that has been seeing me. Um, he's okay with me sharing this. There's no HIPAA or anything else like that. But you can see from 2005 to 2020, there was a really big change. He had changes, uh, he lost about 130 pounds. And I didn't help him besides kind of say, hey, maybe you might wanna consider uh, a low carb diet and intermittent fasting. And you can see that the change, and this is something that is possible. He is now 
totally off of all of his diabetic medication. He is doing great with his fasting and low carb and does multiple day fasts. And he's, he's much healthier because of it. Now, he had a lot of damage in the years prior due to his diabetes and due to other problems with his health that are affecting him now. But to the best of his ability now, he's living a healthier lifestyle. And it's not just the weight loss, but it's being off of the insulin and off of all the other medications. It's, it's good to see that this is something that's possible. And I'll give you a few resources where you can see what other people are doing as well uh, with intermittent fasting. So let's uh, begin our, our talk about the real basics of intermittent fasting. What is intermittent fasting? Basically, it's periods of eating and then periods of not eating. I know that doesn't sound really complex, but in our society, we're, we're in a society, for the most part, we're taught that we have to eat from the moment that we wake up until the moment that we go to bed. Either we're taught that way or it's the food industry that, that tells us to buy, that we have the breakfast food, you have the snack food, you have lunch food, you have ice cream food, you have every single type of food that you can imagine. And um, with this, it, it makes it uh, kind of a, a challenge, okay? Um, <clears throat> and I, and I, there are some questions here and I can see there's some questions, okay? Um, thank you for sending me that. My bandwidth was a little bit low. The slides are here and I am gonna talk about diabetes and it is possible with diabetes. So as you have other questions, you can put them in the chat box. But it's periods of eating and then non-eating, okay? And the, the issue is I was brought up in a culture where I'm from Minnesota and I ate all, all the time. And I thought that was normal. And what initially got me kind of interested in fasting is I had one of my partners at my, at my office where I work and I saw him, he, he never ate lunch. And, and I thought he was gonna die. I'm like, how can this guy just skip lunch? And some days he just ate a sweet potato, some days he ate something else. And he was a, or he is an ultra marathoner. Uh, my partner there is, is Dr. Feldman. So we both kind of worked together and, and I was noticing that he didn't do as much fasting, but he was always interested in health. And I started to be interested in this whole idea of fasting because prior to fasting, I tried the different types of things. I tried doing the, the, the calculators where you calculate the calories. I used to try the, where you do the six small meals a day where you eat really small meals of, of protein and vegetables. And when you, when you do that, I, I really didn't see any benefits in my life. And that's where I came upon this whole idea of intermittent fasting. So it's periods of eating and then not eating. And everyone wants to, okay, get, get to it. So we'll kind of get to it. But before we get into talk more about fasting, I'd like to start with, with those that shouldn't uh, be fasting. Okay. Basically, if you are under the age of 18, we don't recommend children fast. If you are frail, if you are, are, don't have enough you know, you're, you're not healthy to begin with if you're too skinny. Pregnant females shouldn't be doing this, those that are breastfeeding. And then there are, there are some real complications. I was take, talking to a doctor today, Dr. Tro. Um, I have a, a little uh, a, a TV program I do in Worcester called Healthy Living, where I interview different people, and it tends to be about nutrition and health. And I was talking to him, and he, he deals with real kind of complex, if you have a complex situation like um, bulimia, like anorexia, um, like other eating disorders, um, along with diabetes and other things, you really need to seek professional help. That's really beyond the scope of this lecture. This is for the typical person that um, wants to kind of have some lifestyle changes and what they're, what they're doing isn't working. The, the basic eat less and work out more isn't working. And, and that's who this is good for. It's those that have tried to, to work out more and eat less and they're not able to do it. They, they, either because they're not eating the right thing or they're not really sure what to do. And there are some people that need um, medical supervision if you're doing this. And, I, and uh, someone asked me um, if we're going to talk about diabetics. Y yes, we are going to talk about diabetics. And, and those that are diabetics, what I, what I would say is you need to talk to your doctor, especially if you need to what's called de-prescribe. Everyone talks about prescribing these days, Okay. Um, if you would de-prescribe or get you off of your medications or reduce your insulin, that has to be with your doctor, okay? It's beyond the scope here. 
you might need some medical supervision. Those that start doing fasting, let's say longer types of fast that we're going to talk about, maybe with a four hour eating window or alternate day fasting, you're probably going to have to reduce your insulin so you don't go too low. Uh, those that are taking prescription medications probably should be talking to their doctor as well. Uh, those that have gout, sometimes the, the dehydration that can happen with uh, fasting can predispose you to getting a gout attack. And that are the others that have liver, kidney, or heart disease. Okay, so those are things. Um, and I had a, and I'll, I'll try to answer some of these questions as we go. Uh, I'm going to be talking a little bit, but what Susan asked here is, would coffee with two tablespoons of cream and one Splenda uh, break the fast? Really, it, it depends on how much coffee you're drinking. Um, cream is higher fat, and we're going to talk about higher fat. Higher fat is better. Splenda, I guess, but there, there is some research saying that, that Splenda can kind of trick your body. What I would recommend is if you do two tablespoons of cream and one Splenda, try to reduce it until you can get to just doing black coffee with, uh, with some cinnamon. That, that's what I do. But a little bit of heavy cream is probably okay. And it really depends on you. If you're starting to plateau with your weight and we're gonna get talking about weight loss, there are certain periods where people will plateau, uh, then you would probably wanna take that out if you're starting to plateau, okay? Thank you for those questions. Uh, there are also a lot of people have questions about the research about intermittent fasting. At the end, I'm going to give you some links that you can get on these slides and you just click it and it'll take you to all the research documents that you want. This is one uh, by Madsen uh, and it came out in 2019, the effects of intermittent face fasting on health, aging, and disease. And this was in the New England Journal of Medicine. So what we're seeing now, there are big journals that are publishing information about fasting, about intermittent fasting, about low carb. And there is some great research out there. So if you'd like to delve into the research, you could certainly read these articles. Uh, for a lot of people, an easier way is to get a, some books that have kind of researched it for you and they present the research. There's one author named Jason Fong, F-U-N-G, and I'll give you his name later on. But he, he reads everything and he brings it back to you in a kind of a simple to understand format. But there is a lot of research. That's what everyone wants to know. And my big question is, since there is research out there, why aren't more doctors advocating it? And then why aren't uh, more uh, people doing it? And I think a lot of it, uh, there are come some, some, there's different answers to that. But we're not going to go into the philosophical ideas of fasting. I want to get into kind of the benefits of fasting. Uh, in my opinion, the, one of the best benefits to intermittent fasting is it simplifies your day. There's something called decision fatigue. I don't know if you've ever heard of that. Uh, the way I explain it to my patients is that the more decisions you have to make in a day, the, the poorer the decisions get by the end of the day. That's where a lot of the crime happens at nighttime. A lot of our poor decisions, for example, being a, a, a surgeon, uh, towards the end of the day when you're tired, when you're fatigued, you don't make the best surgical decisions. The residents that have to be up all night, they're, they're, they're tired, they're physically fatigued, and there's decision fatigue. I find that not having to decide about what I eat or if I'm gonna eat is one of the easiest liberating things to simplify my day. And, and it is for a lot of my other patients. A lot of my patients say, you know, doctor, it's just so much easier just not having to decide. There, there, it, it's either you're, you're eating or you're not eating and, and that's it. A lot of people really struggle with the decisions of what to eat and what is important but I find that just, well, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm in my fasting window or I'm in my eating window. It makes it a lot easier. There's a lot less guilt. There's a lot fewer decisions that you have to make. If you look at all the longevity research, we see that intermittent fasting helps you live longer. And in the cultures, in the Okinawan cultures, in different cultures where they, they have less body mass index and they're, they're lighter and they're, they're fasting more, and a lot of other cultures, they tend to live longer. And, and one of, the, one of the focuses now towards longevity are longer periods of fasting. There's also a possible risk for cancer because if you think about it, it, it makes sense that if you're not eating anything, 
your body is going to have to burn something. It's going to have to eat something. And it usually would eat what's un unhealthy. And, and for a lot of people, it can be, it can kill or eat the cancer while you're doing the fasting. So this, we're talking like three, four or five day uh, fast for this. We're not going to kind of get into that focus, but we're going to start with the easier ones. But there are, as you start getting more practice and building your confidence, there are benefits for certain people to do longer fasts. It does save you money. A lot of people say, well, you know, I don't have money to eat all organic or grass fed or all these other types of diets like ketogenic or paleo or all these, you know, organic foods. And really when you're fasting, you're not eating anything. So it's really the easiest way to save money. When, when I used to do the six small meals a day, we used to do something called meal prep. So we had two young children we had our food delivered on, uh, I think it was Friday night, and then we cooked all day Saturday, and then we ate that food all week. We froze it, and we ate it all week, and we had a number of meals, and I think we were eating, I don't know, four to six small meals a day, trying to lose weight, trying to be healthy, and what we do now currently is um, we cook uh, Monday, and I eat it Monday and Tuesday night, cook Wednesday, Thursday, and on Friday we have like pizza night where we make pizza. So it, it's a lot easier in terms of for me, and if, if you want to know kind of what I do, I've been doing this for about two years. Uh, from Monday to Friday, I eat, I call it one and a half meals, meaning I'll eat at 5 p.m. and I'll eat a little bit of a snack, usually a Greek yogurt or high fat yogurt with nuts uh, before I go to bed. And I've been doing that for a long time and it just simplifies my life. I don't eat anything during the day. And that's one of the things about simplifying your day. Uh, we don't really do it to, to save money, but it does save money on our, on our bill. Um, and you reduce weight. Uh, I guess that's a, a benefit for if some people do it for weight loss, other people want to do it actually to help with mental clarity. Um, for a lot of people, they, I don't know if you remember on Thanksgiving when we eat, we get so tired afterwards because of all the, everyone thought it was a tryptophan, but really it's how much you eat. And then you get really tired and, if you're eating all day long, your your body is having to process that and sort of has to take energy away from your brain and bring it to your your stomach. And for a lot of people, they 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 get tired. So a lot of people do intermittent fasting uh, for mental clarity. And one of the biggest benefits to me is that for my patients, they say that it's easier than dieting. Now I'm not saying that you don't you shouldn't eat properly. I think you can't outfast a bad diet. But I think a lot of people, they're trying to eat well. They have a kind of a hard time and that, that's kind of a whole other discussion is what's the best type of a diet. Um, my personal opinion is like a low carb type of a diet, but, but the benefits to fasting is that if you're a vegan, you can fast. If you're vegetarian, you can fast. If you're low carb, you can fast. If you're carnivore, you can fast. Because fasting has nothing to do with what you eat. It has everything to do with what you don't eat. And for that reason, it's, it's a lot yeah, easier, okay, in my opinion, than dieting. The way I kind of explain it to patients is if you think about mathematics, five times five is 25, okay? I kind of think of that as dieting, okay? It makes sense. Less calories, you'll do okay. You know, it, that, that, that's how it works. But fasting is like five to the power of five, which is 125. So it's, it's five degree, it's, it's degrees of power higher than just a diet. And that's what I want to express. And even something very simple, like an eight hour, it's called a 16, eight. And we'll talk about some of the terms here in a little bit. It can have a profound effect in, in, on your life. Everyone wants to know how it works. And I want to keep this really simple. Um, but if you, if you look at that graph on the right, what you see here, there, your body is either in a fat burning phase or in a fat storage phase. And all of this is based on something called insulin. And if, you're, if you are a diabetic, you of course know what insulin is. And what happens before someone becomes diabetic or they're pre-diabetic, what, what you become is something called insulin resistant. And to, to explain it, Simply, you can think about there are other areas of resistance that happen. If you think about antibiotic resistance or alcohol resistant, 
what happens with people is that as you have higher amounts of antibiotics in your system, you become resistant to those antibiotics. Because of the high levels of antibiotics, you become resistant to them. And it's the same thing in your body. As your body produces more and more insulin as a result of the food that we're eating, if we're eating all the time, your body is constantly producing that insulin. And then what happens is you become insulin resistant, okay? And then at that time, you can, you can no longer you can no longer store the sugar and you become kind of diabetic. That's a real simple approach to it. But basically every time we're eating something, our insulin is going up. Your glucose goes up and your body produces a, a shot of insulin to, to, um, to put that glucose away. But once your body and your, your pancreas kind of can't produce any more insulin, then you have to give yourself insulin to, to put away that sugar and kind of store that sugar. And that's, that's the fat storage phase. And the only way to reverse, I think I'm unstable again here. The only way to reverse that, that insulin, a high levels of insulin is to have ex extremely low levels of insulin. And when you have low levels of insulin, we'll talk about other things, but the best way to lower your insulin is a period of fasting. Therefore, this picture on the right, you can see that when you eat here at lunch and when you eat here at dinner, dinner there's a fat storage spike, okay? And so you're storing fat during that eight hour period. But the other 16 hours is where you're burning fat. And that's an easy way to, to start is basically skipping breakfast and eating lunch and dinner. And so you're burning fat the other times. This is the easiest way. It's, it's called a 16-8. So you're doing eight hours of fasting and I'm sorry, eight hours of eating and 16 hours of fasting. And usually that's a, a two, two meal period during that time. I hope that it's pretty simple. It's not real rocket science. But if you can imagine, the more fat you want to lose or the more you want to reverse your diabetes, the lower levels of, of insulin you're going to need. And we're going to talk more about things that cause your in insulin to go up. It's not just food. Now, the relative amount that your insulin goes up, that's where it's the type of food that affects it. Does, does that make sense? So one is eating, right? Anything you put in your mouth, that's why there was a question about coffee with, let's, let's say coffee with cream and sugar. You know, doctor, I'm not eating breakfast. All I have is coffee and cream and sugar. Well, that spikes your insulin, okay? And that, and that puts you out of a, a fasting period. So it's basically as if you're eating because your body can't do both. It can't burn fat and store fat at the same time. It can only do one or the other. That's why if you're doing fasting, it's, it's, it's only black coffee, tea, water, things like that. Anything that bumps up and, and different foods bump up your, your insulin differently. If you are eating uh, breakfast with an oatmeal, which everyone says is really good, but it's, it's pure carbs, it's going to bump it up more than if you're eating eggs and bacon, which are, are fattier, that have more fat. And they're, they're, they're going to have what we call a lower glycemic or lower insulin index, okay? And this is going to go against everything that, that we've ever learned. But the relative amount of those peaks are based on what you're eating. And what, what makes it peak less are fats, vegetables, and meats. That's called like ketogenic or low carb. That's why everyone talks about low carb because they, they, they don't let that, that spike of that insulin go as high. But everything you eat is gonna make it spike. That's why even if you're eating really well, let's say meat and, vegeta uh, meat and vegetables, which is what I did, but you're eating eight times a day, you're gonna have eight spikes and you're never gonna burn any fat. Hope that makes sense for people. So you have these eight spikes on there, you're never gonna burn any fat and you're not gonna lose any weight. You might lose it because you're eating less, but, you're, but weight is regulated by hormones, not what we eat. What we eat affects hormones and that's why 
it, it affects our weight. And that was something really hard for me personally to, to kind of understand. I always thought, you know, uh, I have these Oreo cookies that are 100, grand, 100 calories and I have 100 calories of celery or 100 calories of meat. And I was thinking about calories in, calories out. That, that's not the way it works. It's all based on hormones. That's why if you, you see those two lumps with the lunch and dinner, well, if you take the lunch and dinner and you put them together and you eat about the same amount, but you only have one spike, you're going to have a longer period of really low levels and you're going to burn more fat and you're going to lose more weight. That's why when you do this one big meal a day, like, you, like I do, it's a big meal, okay? It, 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 I'm not, I don't restrict, I, I eat a lot. So it's not calorie restriction, that's totally different. Okay, I hope this explains a little bit about how fasting works. And this is a really important point. If you guys have any questions, you can certainly write them down here uh, at this time. There are, uh, we'll get to the, some of the other uh, questions about it. There are some other ways that you can reduce insulin. Our, our whole focus is on the hormone of insulin. Insulin is a fat storage uh, hormone. Okay, yeah, that's what someone said. Thanks, Cheryl. Um, it's, it's, it's totally opposite than what ever been, ever been told. Yeah, and I don't want you to take my word for it. I, I'd like you to read some of the books that I'll, I'll recommend to you. But if what I always say is if what you're doing isn't working, you, you may want to consider maybe it's something that we don't know, that you're, you're not understanding the right way and not just keep doing it, okay? So the different ways of reducing insulin. Okay, let's say your focus is on reducing insulin because insulin makes you hold on to fat. My opinion, the number one is fasting, okay? And then the next is those spikes that we were talking about, those are higher if you have refined carbohydrates, okay? Refined carbohydrates. So what are refined carbohydrates? It's not like... The, the, the healthy, it's like the, the flours, the sugars, um, and, and things like that, okay? Reducing the dietary uh, refined carbohydrates because they spike. Eat I high fat diet, so natural fats, okay? And uh, eating high fat diets, they don't spike the insulin as much. Make sense? Okay, so natural fats. What are the most common natural fats that I eat? I eat uh, avocado, you can see the picture here, fish, nuts, those would be the, I do a lot of high fat yogurt. Now, don't get the diet, you want the full fat, you want as much fat as you can get. I do a, I do a lot of almond butter too, because it's high fat. You try, you try to look for things that have like one gram of sugar and the rest fat. That's what I, that's what I t tend to do. Um, I'm going to finish this slide, then I'm going to answer uh, some of these uh, questions if you'd like. Fiber, fiber reduces insulin as well. What happens with the refining process, for example, of uh, orange juice, if you take an orange and you like have a cup of orange juice, that might be three oranges. You're never going to eat three oranges, but it's really easy to drink a cup of orange juice because it's been refined and you lose all that fiber. So fiber is also um, very, very good for your diet, either adding fiber, or eating foods with fiber. And fiber is what brings down the, the insulin and helps you process it. And, and, and the, you tend to notice that sh natural sugars that are in nature, they tend to be high in fiber as well. A lot of the, the vegetables, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, a lot of the fruits, they have fiber naturally in them to kind of combat each other. You have the, the, the venom, you could call it, and the antidote together. But what happens with our processes of refining these foods is that we take out all the antidote, all the fiber is taken out, okay? Um, and then also uh, vinegar. Some people do uh, vinegar. Uh, they take maybe, a, 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 I don't know if you want to call it, like a little glass of vinegar uh, a day. I do kombucha, which is kind of similar. We make our own kombucha. We brew our own kombucha. And if you, if you want to know, I can, you can email me. I can tell you how we do. We make our own high-fat yogurt. We go get buy two gallons of high-fat milk, and we make two gallons of high-fat yogurt every, every week or two. And then kombucha, we have our own little distillery here. That's kind of like vinegar. If you leave it too long, it turns to vinegar. And then spices and herbs, that's kind of beyond the focus, but that also can help reduce the insulin. There, um, there's a couple of comments about, I think it's a polycystic uh, ovarian um, syndrome. 
And a lot of people with, with that condition um, also have to be careful, but they, the, the fasting is a very natural way and also changing the diet uh, of helping with that. Um, there are different thoughts about any food or drink under five calories won't break a fast. Um, and are there some foods that are the best to eat when breaking the fast? That's a, that's a really good question, Amy. In, in my opinion, I like to keep it simple. I, I, don't, I don't ever look at calories. I've, I've never looked at calories in my life. I also, when I got married, I also never looked at expiration dates. And so when I got married, everything was thrown away. But, so I never look at calories. But the way I keep it really simple is I say, I don't do, when I'm fasting, it's, it's black tea or tea, water, a carbonated water, and then coffee. That, that's about it. I tend to do more hot beverages because I think hot beverages fill me up more. Uh, but really, the, the real key is uh, being busy. That's the real key. Okay. Um, and uh, are there some foods when you're breaking your fast? Yes, in my opinion. So for example, if you're doing, this is the way I kind of think about it. I like to simplify things. And if I'm doing one meal a day, um, it, that's what I normally do. It's usually going to be a very good meal. I'll try to have like a low carb meal. Um, usually vegetables, meat, uh, we make beans and rice at home. Uh, we're, my, my wife's Brazilian and we, we eat that food and usually a meat. And that's what I'll have. Your first meal, when you're breaking your fast, you might be breaking your fast at noon. You might be breaking your fast at 5 p.m. Breaking a fast is just when your breakfast is usually when you're breaking your fast. The, the best foods to eat are the, the ones your body are gonna crave. I find if I've been doing a 20 hour fast and I'm eating, my body is gonna crave good foods. It's gonna usually be a big salad with once again, mayonnaise on there and an egg on there and nuts on there and avocado on there. And I put olive oil on there, everything I can get that's fatty and a lot of salt. Cause I'm a, I'm a big, I, I add tons of salt to everything because probably because I'm, I'm not eating as much and I'm trying to replenish that, but I do a lot of salt. I find a lot of people that have harder time fasting, it's because they're salt depleted. So you need to add uh, salt to that. Okay, so, but basically there's not one great food, but I, I, if you've been doing longer fasts, I tend to break it part by part. So if I'm doing a longer fast, let's say a two or a three day fast, then what I, what I tend to do um, is I'll have some nuts and then I might go take a shower or have a little salad, then go take a shower and do something else and then come back. And I find I just don't over overeat as much. Uh, in terms of the question, yes, it's always Himalayan salt. That's what I put uh, a lot of times during the day. I'll have salt at lunchtime. I'll, have, I'll sort of put salt in my tea. I'll put salt in my coffee. If you're doing longer fasts and you, you, you can drink a lot of water, you try to drink a lot of water, but I, 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 I fat, I, I salt supplement and everything. Every food that I eat now isn't salty enough for me. That's what I find. And I, in every restaurant I go and everyone gets offended by me, but I just, I say, give me the salt. So I put salt on everything. Um, congratulations. So someone says here, they're doing a five weeks, doing a, a 10, 14. Good. Uh, and the question is if they do a 16, eight. Uh, yeah, I, 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 the question is, uh, is it gonna go faster doing a 16, eight? Yeah, I think 16, eight is a, the best way to start. And we'll, we'll get into some of these uh, fasting regimens, but yeah, the, the smaller the, uh, the eating window, the better you're gonna do, certainly. Okay, let's go on here. Now we're gonna get into the bread and butter here of some of the types of fasts. Once again, this is an intro and uh, I'll, I'm gonna keep it real simple for you. This is what I started with. Uh, this is called a 16, eight, if you've ever heard, <clears throat> about a 16-8 fast. I can see my internet was going out there a little bit. This is the 16-8 fast, okay? Very simple, you just skip breakfast every day. This is the easiest one to do. This is where everyone should start. Once you get confident at doing this, then you can go on to the, to the next one, okay? Um, and basically you're eating like lunch and dinner, and then you don't eat breakfast. Make sense? It's pretty, pretty simple. This is uh, where I, I recommend most of my patients go. Um, this, is, this is actually what I do. This is a 24 fast. And so this doesn't mean you have to do this every single day, but basically I'll drink a coffee at breakfast, I'll drink coffee at lunch and maybe a coffee in between. And then I usually get home at about five o'clock and I'll eat dinner. 
and then I'll eat, I call it one and a half meals uh, because I'll usually eat something before I go to bed. But I, now this is a lot of food, okay? You're not counting calories here. And in the beginning, I used to overeat, okay? I thought I was going to die and this is, you know, but after a while, it's like you kind of get used to it. It takes practice. I know I didn't start, I started with this back here, okay? Um, right here. And then what, the way I did it is I, I took on a Wednesday and I pick one day a week, let's say you pick Wednesday. Okay. And then I, I did the, the, the 20 hour fast. I picked one day a week and I skipped lunch as well. And then once I got confident on Wednesdays doing it, then I did it Tuesdays and Thursdays. And then eventually it just got easier for me to do it every single day. That's how I got up to this. I didn't start with this. I picked one day. I was just doing this just on Wednesday not eating. And then I, then I built it up, added a day. Okay. And I'm going to answer some questions as we go here. Um, I've been fasting along with keto. There are some menopause issues as well. Um, that certainly can, some hormones can affect. Um, there are some plateaus. It's kind of beyond the scope here of this. Uh, I, I would read, um, I would go to the, the fasting method. They have a, um, a, a Facebook group this is for uh, the, the one that mentioned that about plateauing. It's a Facebook group where you can put in their menopause, you can put in plateauing, and it'll talk about it. But basically what they'll do, if, if you've been doing fasting, first of all, I don't know if you've been doing 24s, I would start with the 24. Uh, and then and then go if you're not, if that's still not working, you could try, I could talk, I'm going to talk about an alternate day with you. Um, another question, is it really necessary to skip breakfast? I eat dinner early around 4.30. Uh, but uh, and then breakfast at 8.30, okay? So ba basically, if you eat dinner at 4.30 and, and you go uh, around the clock, um, you're, you're gonna be fine, but it, depends on, it really depends on how much you have to lose or how much you want to lose. If you really like breakfast at 8.30, it's, it's gonna be okay. But what I wanna explain is some people confuse it. They think that they can eat like breakfast and then just dinner. Eating breakfast at 8.30 and dinner at 4.30, okay, or five, those two meals isn't the same as eating um, something at like 2 p.m. and then 4.30 p.m. The closer the meals are together, the more effective it is, okay? Usually I say it's a four hour to five hour window. If you can eat all your food within a four hour to five hour window, so you really have to see what's the most important meal for you to eat. So if your last meal is at 4.30 and you don't snack and eat anything else after that, I would say try to eat from noon to 4 or 4.30. That's what I would do. If you, really, if you have a lot to lose, that would kind of work the, the best, okay? Um, yeah, and we're going to talk about being hangry and irritable and things like that. We're going to talk about that. Um, and uh, so th this is a good question. This I want to talk about this first. Um, working out, I, I do... Uh, a boot camp at 5:30 in the morning, and and then I um, then I fast all day till 5:30 p.m. And so I just drink water. I used to do protein drink, you know, the pre-workout and the post-workout, and then the big breakfast with sweet potatoes and eggs and all this stuff. Now I don't do anything. I, I work out at 5:30 in the morning till 6:30 at boot camp, and then I go to work and I don't until 5:30 p.m. and I'm and I'm fine. Okay. So, uh, so the question is, uh, so eating at noon and then six isn't good. No, that's a six hour window. So that's, if you're, if you're seeing results with a six hour window, that's fine. Okay. But if you're not seeing the results, then you need to go to a smaller window. And if you're not still not seeing results, you have to think about, are you eating anything or drinking anything else that has calories in it? And, uh, so I want to go a little bit, I know that this is kind of a beginner's fasting, but I, I, some, I've been, been getting a lot of questions about people that I find pay, people that have more than like 25 to 50 pounds to lose um, tend to do a lot better. Uh, good. So yeah, you're seeing a, a loss. So that that's great. So just keep, if you're, if the, I'm talking about more people plateau. So if you're doing an eight hour eating window and you're seeing results or a six hour or a four hour, you're seeing results, you keep, you keep doing that until you plateau. And then if you plateau, you go to the next step. Okay. That's what I'm kind of letting people know, or you switch the foods or something like that. For people that have a whole bunch to lose, um, it, it's it, the 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 best way is something called alternate day or longer fasts. Okay, once again, I want to preface this. 
I, I'm not your doctor. You need to talk to your doctor if you have any questions or if you're concerned. This isn't for everyone, but a lot of people give me these questions. I practice for three months uh, alternate day fasting, okay? Uh, what is alternate day fasting? The, the easiest way to explain alternate day fasting is you don't eat anything alternate days. And that might be Monday, Wednesday, Friday. What I did was Tuesdays and Thursdays. So everything I, I talk about, I, I wanted to try on myself, okay? And so I didn't, I did Tuesdays and Thursdays. And one thing, I, I don't think we've really mentioned this, but this fasting needs to fit into your lifestyle, okay? Uh, you don't want to fast when, when you're with people, when you're having to socially eat, when you're with your family, um, you, you, when you're on vacation, when you're traveling, when you have stressors, because stress really affects your ability to fast, basically because of the cortisol levels, the hormone cortisol. And when I did alternate day fasting, I did this for about three months and I didn't eat Tuesdays or Thursdays. So basically I eat uh, Monday, I usually eat lunch and dinner on Monday, and then I didn't eat all day Tuesday. And then Wednesday, I started eating at either breakfast or lunch. I usually ate those, those three, the three meals or two meals, depends on how hungry I was. And it was beneficial. I saw more fat loss. Um, I didn't, I saw more like what you'll find a lot of times with fasting, you don't find that the scale changes, but you feel that your, your clothes fit differently. Okay. That means body composition. So the stuff changes around. Like the you know changes to muscle because you have an increased amount of growth hormone if you look at the research, and so your clothes are going to feel better even though you might not always lose weight. So weight always isn't the best indicator. I found when doing this for three months that I I liked it. I I loved eating breakfast again because frankly breakfast is my breakfast like the 8 a.m. or 7 a.m. meal was my favorite one. I got up and I had this feast of sweet potatoes, home fries, and eggs and bacon, and it was great. Uh, the problem for me, what I didn't like so much about alternate day fasting is it was hard for me to sleep. Okay. That was the hardest thing. I just, I, I, I like to eat before I go to bed. That's why I push everything to the evening. That's why my meals go from five to 9 PM. It just, I like to eat before I go to bed. It's easier for me to sleep. Some people, my wife, she's the total opposite. She doesn't show her last meal is like two or three in the afternoon. And uh, she, she doesn't like to eat before she goes to bed. But that was my whole glimpse about intermittent fast, uh, alternate day fasting. For those that have a lot to lose, I found that consistently doing this, so consistently doing the one meal a day, the, the 24, like the four hour eating window, doing that consistently. And then if you plateau or you're in a rush, doing the alternate day, if you can fit it into your life is the easiest, okay? And I don't want you to just take my, my, my word for that, I, I interview my different patients and I'm gonna show you a little video of a patient of mine I interviewed about this, just so you can see how she's a normal person and she allowed me to do this, to share this video. But this is a patient of mine, um, she um, transitioning from 16 hour fasting, uh, so that's the 16, eight to a 36 hour fasting. Okay, so I'm gonna play this just so you can kind of see it in her words uh, for it. Um, where did it go here? Recently, you've started to go from a 16-8 up to like a 36-hour fast. So kind of tell me your, your experience, how you jumped. Was it a big jump? I know that's, I think a lot of people have the fear of alternate day. I think 36 is also called alternate day. A lot of people, a lot of, a lot of scared, a lot of fear going into 36 hours. So tell me your story. Well, initially, I think I was getting pretty good results um, when, I, when I switched from 12-12 and gradually worked myself up to 16-8. I started to plateau a little bit around September um, 2019 and all the way through to about May. And I didn't really understand why. And I started playing a game with my friend too. So we both like, you know, <laughs> trying to see who can drop the most uh, percentage uh, in weight. And so we have a, a game of 5%, 10%, 15%. So it kind of motivated me to, to do something more. And um, so I started going from 16 to 18 to 20 hour fast. And I started noticing some results, but then, you know, there are a lot of, because I had four kids and uh, I get a lot of skin, um, extra skins around my abdomen. I wanted to get rid of it. And so people have suggested to go to 36 to 48 hours fasting. So that motivated me to just give it a, give it a try. 
And so I just basically jumped from about 18 to 20 hours. Uh, and on just one week, I just said, let's just do 30, 36 hours and see how it goes. And um, I started, they suggested to drink a little bit of coffee and tea in the morning to tie me over. And that worked really well. And I think I get a little hungry right around the 24 hours. But if I, if I can just continue drinking water, and the way I time it is right around the 24 hours around my bedtime. So if I can just fall asleep and wake up in the morning, then 7 a.m., then I can eat right away. So it kind of works out for me to not like be alert between that 24 to 36 yeah. hours for so long. And um, reaching my, my weight goal, I was able to drop, you know, like eight pounds in a month. It was about two pounds a week, almost consistently as I'm doing this. So it really motivated me and I could feel the difference. That's great. So for those that are unfamiliar, we'll talk about it. So a 20 hour eating window is basically you're just eating one meal a day, maybe a little snack. So a four hour eating window, right? Mm -hmm. And then when you go to the 36, because I did 36 for about two or three months. Okay. You don't want to hear me talk more, but uh, I, I think it's really important to, to, to see what other people are doing. And that's why there's a couple of good Facebook groups. I don't use Facebook much, but I like to eavesdrop on the conversation. And what I like to interview different people. So certainly if you'd like me to interview you, I'd be happy to, because I want to learn from you what's, what's working for you. And what we're going to talk about are different um, tips and tricks. And, you know, someone asked me about being uh, hangry and how do you get over that? Uh, and, and so I'll give you some tips for, for me that work for me. But let, let's get into the fasting. So when you're fasting, what is it that you can drink? You can drink coffee, um, cold uh, water, hot water, tea, coffee, and bone broth. And I, and I put here salt. So you want to add salt to something. A lot of times to salt underneath your tongue, Himalayan salt. My opinion I do all hot beverages during the day. I do hot coffee. I do hot tea. I, I do some water. I like sparkling water. I really do with the, with the flavors. But hot water is a better appetite suppressant. If you look at any of the research on people that, yeah, I know we're not talking about um, eating disorders, but a lot of people that are anorexic, they, they tend to drink a lot of hot water because it, it does cause your, your stomach to be full. That's not the reason we're doing it, but it, it, if, you're, if you're having a hotter time, I would say drink hotter beverages versus colder beverages. Um, bone broth, you can look at any of the websites like the Diet Doctor and they have some good re recipes for bone broth. What is bone broth? Basically you take uh, any type of a bone, we do chicken bones, you boil it for a long time, you add vegetables to it, and then you strain off all the vegetables and meat and everything and you have this like a bone fatty fatty liquid with a lot of salt. When I, when I did my, I only use that when I did my three day fasts, my longer ones on a typical, you know, 20 hour or a, an alternate day. I did not do that. But when I was doing longer ones, that's when I was, was using the bone broth to, to get me through it. It gives you a full feeling. Um, actually, I want to take that back. When I was doing my alternate day fasts, I'm a, I'm a family guy. And so I got home, my family was eating at 5 p.m. So I sat down and I, and I drank my soup or my bone broth. And no one else, no one really, my kids didn't care. My, you know, my wife, she was on. And, um, and that's what I did. I did my bone, bone broth at, at dinner time. So I find the social aspect for me, the hardest part is I wanted to fit it around my lifestyle. I didn't want to be that person that says, oh, I, I can't eat that. I don't like to be that, that type of a person. Okay. Uh, let's, let's go here now and, and, and talk uh, a little bit about what are some of the more common questions that we get. Okay. Um, oh, <laughs> I don't like hot beverages. Yeah, I, you, can, you can do cold, it's fine, but I just find it's easier with hot. Okay. Some of the frequently asked questions, someone asked me about working out. Yes, you can work out in the fasted state. There's a book called Lean Gains which the people that actually began intermittent fasting when working out were the bodybuilders because they are a group of people that have high muscle mass and they also have a very low body fat, okay? Um, and then uh, how to manage hunger. This is the hung hungry hangries. Basically, I say the most important thing is to stay busy. 
Stay busy is the best way to manage the hunger. Stay busy, hot beverages, occupy your time, don't be bored, okay? Is it hard to concentrate? In the beginning, I think it is. Um, when you're all you're doing is thinking about food, then later on, it, 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 it isn't. You get over it. It takes about a couple weeks. If you have diabetes, that was another question. Once again, talk to your doctor, but usually if you're doing longer fasts, let's say a 20-hour fast or alternate day fast, you're going to have to reduce your insulin level and maybe uh, alter your doses or some medications you shouldn't take in the fasted states. You could take it later on. Okay. Can women fast? Yes, women can fast. They usually don't see the, the quick results that men do. Um, fasting isn't the same as eating calories. So if I took everything that I eat in my one meal and I stretched it out in a 12 hour period, I wouldn't see the same benefit. Okay. If I ate, you know, a little, you know, a banana here and then, um, sorry, if I, if I see a banana here, then almond butter here and then beans here and then some rice here and then, uh, meat here and then some of my cake that I ate for dinner dessert, but I eat it all within like a, a two or three hour window, you wouldn't see the same results. So it's different than less calories. Okay. Um, possible side effects. You know, there, if you, I'll let you refer to some of the books. Um, you, once again, danger. I think if you do really, really prolonged ones, if you're unhealthy to begin with, if you're you know, nutrient imbalanced, but there has been results of people doing fast for over 365 days, over a year with just a multivitamin and they're fine because your body has everything it needs in it. And then vitamins, most people I just recommend, uh, you know, I don't recommend it, but most people take a multivitamin. And then medications, you have to talk to your doctor. Some medications shouldn't be taken while fasting. So you might take it later in the day or you might reduce the dosage. That's with you and your doctor. Um, you asked about uh, if you're hitting a, if you're losing, then you hit a plateau. Basically what the plateau means is you have to either look at what you're eating. You have to look at your stress level because stress is a big cause. You have to look at sleep because sleep, if you're not sleeping enough, if you're stressed, even if you're eating the same thing, you may plateau, you may put, put on weight, but then try to increase the, or increase the fasting window. Do alternate day, do a longer fast. A 16-8 is a good way to start, but most people uh, go on from there pretty quick. Um, when you're talking to your doctor, I do recommend talking to your doctor, but I, I, re I recommend even more is that if, if you're safe doing it, do it, have them see the results go in there and be 30, 40 pounds lighter. And then you can say, you know, I've been doing this intermittent fasting. I've been eating, eating better. And uh, I just wanted to let you know, maybe we have to take me off some of my medications and see what they say. Okay. But you want to educate, you can read the books, give them the, give them one of the books you're reading. Um, sometimes you might be more educated about fasting than your doctor is. Okay. It's something that's around, but a lot of doctors don't have much, we don't get much nutrition in school about fasting. Some fasting tips and tricks. Uh, my, my main one for you is uh, don't tell anyone, okay? Uh, because everyone's going to say you're crazy, right? Everyone's going to criticize you. So don't, don't tell anyone. Um, when I'm in the office seeing patients, I don't have any obligations to anyone. No one knows if I eat breakfast. I work through lunch every day and I eat dinner when I get home. I don't have to tell anyone. It works pretty easy for me. Um, I don't, if you're not that busy, it's hard. If you're around people all the time that are eating, eating really unhealthily, um, then it's um, even more difficult. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, drink, uh, drink a lot of water or hot beverages, stay busy. I do a lot of coffee and, and the key with, with fasting, you have to ride the waves. Uh, the, the hunger pangs of fasting, they kind of go in, um, they kind of go in, in waves. So ride it. It might last 10, 15, 20 minutes. When I was doing the, the alternate day ones, you know, it, it was a little bit hard for a little bit, but then you get better at it. it, it it's like anything, you have to build your confidence. So you, just so you know, you're not gonna start with doing a one meal a day or the four hour window right away. Most people aren't, they're gonna do the 16, eight for two or three weeks. And then you're gonna try to do, okay, Wednesdays, I'm gonna try to do a longer one. And then once you're able to do that, then you're gonna, okay, I wanna try, you know, skipping all day on one day. And, and that's how you do it. You, you, you have to give yourself time to adjust. I said, give yourself a, a, a month. Okay. Um, I want to be very clear. Fasting isn't an excuse to eat whatever you want. If you're eating whatever you want, like a lot of what I mean by that, if, if what you want is high sugar food, processed food, you're just not going to feel good. You might lose weight, but it's just like, it's not a, it's not going to be a healthy, healthy skinny. There can be unhealthy skinnies, right? Uh, and so you should eat um, good food, whole food. I always say you want to eat around the periphery in the, uh, in the grocery store when you're eating. So meats, vegetables, 
unprocessed food as much as you can. And then occasionally you can enjoy yourself. That's, that, that's the benefit, okay? Um, yeah. Okay, and then fit it into your life. I, I think that's key. For me, that's the most important thing. So some days when I'm traveling for work, I'll just fast longer because I don't have any obligations. If um, I'm, I'm at a holiday like Thanksgiving or Christmas or whatever holidays you may uh, um, celebrate, what a lot of times I'll do like a day and a half or a two-day fast prior or I can do a, a pre-fast or a post-fast so I can really enjoy those holidays or birthdays or, or things like that. Um, so that's an, another tip for you. There are some myths here I wanted to go over and we have about five minutes left here. So I'm going to try to give you some time for questions here at the end. Um, breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Uh, that's uh, not correct. Breakfast is the easiest meal to skip of the day and it's the easy one, easiest one to go without. And so that's, that's what I say because your body produces natural hormones when you wake up that actually don't make you hungry. I think a lot of times we're just in a hurry uh, and not in, in, in a hurry. If we're in a hurry, or we're supposed to be eating, then we just eat bad things for breakfast. Um, and uh, next is eat small, frequent meals. Not so much as well. Um, that, that's not the best way. Take all, I always say if you eat five small meals, put them all together and then eat that one big meal. Um, if you can't work out, that's the, that's the great thing. Uh, I'm sure you, you, if you can't work out, um, you, you can work out with this. There's no problem. Okay, you can work out and fast. Uh, I can eat whatever I want. Not really. It's, it's not going to be too good for you. Um, you have to eat what still is, is good, healthy food. Um, I will lose muscle mass. Your body only burns muscle last, last resort. You're going to burn fat first. That's how our bodies are made. That's how we were made. We're not going to burn muscle. I'll get low blood sugar. You need to talk to your doctor about that. If you're on medications that lower your blood sugar and you're not eating, you will get low blood sugars. My metabolism will slow down when fasting. Actually the opposite, they did some research where they took people and they gave them a calorie restricted diet, let's say 500 calories a day. And those ones, their metabolism did go down. If, uh, but if you're doing fasting, it actually revs your metabolism up. So you can read more about that. Um, I'm gonna give you some resources here. Uh, the dietdoctor.com, great website. All the books by Jason Fong, Obesity Code, Diabetes Code, Complete Guide to Fasting, Life in the Fasting Lane. YouTube, there's a lot of good uh, videos. Um, questions about salt and blood pressure. You know, I, gosh, talk to your doctor, but what's going to happen is most people, when they do a lot of fasting, intermittent fasting and do low carb, they get off all their blood pressure medications because it's, it's all the foods that we eat that are processed that are that are, you know, salt isn't, isn't going to cause the high blood pressure. I think that's a misnomer. Okay. We have to talk to your doctor about that. Um, here are some resources, uh, just a, kind of a checklist. What to eat when fasting, coffee, water, bone broth, times to fast, 16, 8, 24, alternate day, uh, keep busy, some tips, reduce, uh, drink water and coffee, reduce stress, don't tell anyone, track when you eat versus what. That's a key I used to always track what I eat. I don't, what I eat. <laughs> now I track when, okay? So track uh, when you eat. And then it works by insulin regulation. Here are some resources here. And I'll give you the link to this slides. But um, Jason Fong, here's a link to all of his books, Diet Doctor, some podcasts you might like, YouTube videos you might like, Facebook groups you might like. And then if you want to go into the research, there's the research articles. All these are clickable links. Here's my email, um, Donna at Central Mass Podiatry. If you send me a, an email, I can certainly send this, but it also is in the description of the video. I'm considering putting together um, a support group for intermittent fasting. Um, I just wanted to know if people are interested. So if you're interested in an intermittent fasting support group, one doesn't exist in Worcester area. Um, it would probably be like an online thing and we'd maybe, I don't know, meet once a month and just answer questions, help people give resources. If you would, just send me an email at Don at Central Mass Podiatry. Tell me you're interested. And if there's enough interest, I'd be happy to maybe get together with some other people and do that. Once again, if you want to download the presentation, you can take a picture of this with your cell phone and uh, you can do things like that. And then I'm here uh, to answer any of your questions as we complete this or any comments uh, about the, the talk here. You guys can either open your mics or you can just chat and, and send me a question. And uh, I think I've answered most of them as we went on here. Yeah, I'll put my email right here. Okay, don at centralmasspodiatry.com. Um, there we go. 
Okay, very good. Well, thank you guys. Uh, it was, uh, I hope you found it helpful, beneficial. Um, thank you all for, for coming. I thank um, Shrewsbury Public Library as well for letting me do this. I hope you found it beneficial. I'll try to do another one. And, uh, but certainly email me any questions you have. I'll, I'll, I'll probably direct you to different resources. Once again, I, I'm not a diet doctor, I'm a podiatrist, but I'm, I'm really motivated to help people with this. Hey guys, thank you for watching Healthy Living. You're gonna find a few links here I'd like to click. One is to subscribe to this channel on YouTube. Uh, also, you can learn more. There are some videos here you can see.